So uh, the last time I had the chance to speak with His Holiness was in 2006 in a room of, uh, it was about 14,000 women at the time. And uh, His Holiness asked the crowd and said, uh, women need to be involved in more influential positions in the world. Um, you said the world will be better off because women have more warm-heartedness, they are more nurturing, they are more compassionate. How are we doing in the world? How are we doing? How have we done in those last three years? Are women making a difference in the world? I don't know. <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, you do. He always says, I don't know, and then I push him, and he goes, okay, well, I know a little bit. I'm like, the man has written so many books, and he, like, reads all day, meditates, and he's, like, the smartest person. You do, too, now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think at least I'm quite sure, I think, uh, as a result of as a, uh, sort of uh, conversation and also many occasions in Europe and also America, uh, uh, I, on a number of occasions, you see, appealing. Uh, people in general, particularly the uh, female, uh, because of biological factor, uh, female more sensitivity about others' pains and suffering. So, our time, you see, we need special effort for promotion of human compassion. In that respect, female. Uh, but today I should make more important role. So perhaps sort of appealing I mean these things maybe more number of female may get more self confidence and more willingness to do. That I'm quite sure. But the real significance of the of that. A change? I don't know. Okay. So, so you, you should investigate. <laughs> I am, I am. Well, there's a lot of women who have self-confidence, but they hit barriers, and people perhaps don't think that they can run companies or run countries or be who they imagine themselves to be. So what would you say to men who perhaps don't Maybe think that women can do all those things? I think at least in India, one time Prime Minister, one lady Prime Minister, uh, not necessarily, I think, more so, so uh, co making combination by mail, by through vote. So, uh, Lady Indira Gandhi ji, uh, of course, daughter of Pandit Nehru, that also makes some differences, but basically herself shows ability and efficient. So ultimately, depend on yourself. <laughs> more hard work and proof. You see, you can do more, then more voters will come. Then more voters will come if you prove you can do hard work. Mm. You think so? Marve. Yeah. I, th I think that's the way. It, I think one of the greatness, greatness of democracy is I think the individual people, they show them uh, ability. And I think nowadays maybe people more conscious, well, more conscious about sincerity, truthfulness, honesty. Yes. I think sometimes 
You see, people more attention about just ability. Nowadays, I think moral principle. This also, I think, becoming more and more important factor. Your Holiness, so many people feel um, that the qualities that are needed to succeed in business and politics are the opposite of compassion, that it's very tough out there, it's very competitive, it's, as they say in America, a dog-eat-dog world, and that if you lead with compassion, you won't succeed. That, I think, the uh, mis misunderstanding about compassion, the meaning of compassion. I often used to make clear the, com the compassionate practitioner, compassionate person, uh, not necessarily be weak. Uh, not weak. Not weak. Uh, now, here we have to make a distinction. The action and the actor. So as far as action is concerned, we, uh, sometimes we need countermeasure and including a little bit harsh method. Uh, so in that respect, sometimes uh, for immediate motivation, some anger also have a role. Uh, but then those actor, a person, always maintain compassion, sense of uh, for the person. So there is no contradiction. Uh, immediate motivation, little anger, and tough measure, harsh method. Uh, that does not mean you really feel anger towards the person. Please so explain. that we can do. How do we, how do we use our anger to get something done and then switch it to be compassionate to our neighbor? So such case, a real motivation is compassion. Then in order to bring more harsh method, immediate motivation, anger. That's the way. Something that's always interested me about you, Your Holiness, is how you often talk about um, being able to have, to be content and still outraged at social injustice. How do those two things coexist? Oh, sure. So this is just like this, as I mentioned earlier. Because of your serious concern about the well-being of the community or people, so these wrong things are very harmful. So because of your concern about the well-being of the humanity, so these wrong things, uh, actually all these, uh, I think, carried by the people, uh, or should they, mainly due to short-sighted, narrow-minded. They simply, you see, seeing on immediate sort of area. Uh, so this wrong method or sort of mystery, wrong doing actually harmful ultimately themselves. But without knowing that, just of too much sort of emotion, just the immediate sort of benefit. So therefore, there is reason to feel sympathy or concern for these people. So with that kind of motivation, then a harsh word or criticism like that. So there's no contradiction. No contradiction. Uh, actually, it's a compa it's a compassion means well-being of other. Uh, uh, caring for well-being of other. 
So anything which uh, ultimately harmful, then you have to sort of you have to oppose. Anything that is harmful, you have to oppose. Yes, sir. Anything that is harmful to the others' welfare. To others' welfare, you oppose. And yourself also. Now, I often is telling people, if there's a mad dog coming, then if you sit, compassion, compassion. <laughs> foolish. Foolish. Oh, foolish. Foolish, okay. <laughs> yeah. What do you do to the mad dog that's coming, coming, coming? Oh. I think two ways. Either run away. <laughs> uh, one time in Noblinga, you see, we had one, oh, Lhasa, yes. Uh, that day, we have some, how's it, because of the offering, Shabdhan Church. Some ritual. Some ritual. Mm -hmm. uh, some monk, and including my uh, two tutors also there. So we carry some sort of ritual things. And then at break, I returned to my own house. So when I, uh, uh, when I come in, walking, I notice one big dog, Kuchiri A mad dog, without a leash. Without a leash, without a leash yeah. mm -hmm. Coming at you. No, 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 it's there, I saw. Then I run. <laughs> <laughs> So the, at the next sort of session, when I reached there, my two tutors laughing oh, towards me because you see, they noticed you see, I, I run so fast. <laughs> because that energy brought by fear. <laughs> so according to according scientists, when fear, uh, fear emotion come, yeah. then the blood, yeah. more blood goes to leg muscle oh, in order to run. So I use that. <laughs> your, your Holiness, what are you afraid of in 2009? What do you fear? Lodina. Mm -hmm. I think the uh, 2008, 10th of March crisis in Tibet. So at that time, actually, afternoon 10th of March, I received information from Lhasa, the Tibetan, uh, already, some Tibetan already moving for demonstration. Then I immediately got some kind of the, was it the experience which occurred 1959, 10th March. Feeling of anguish or helplessness and much worry, anxiety like that. So that in recent years, that's one of the, uh, I think, more serious of Concern, but fortunately, uh, uh, so the disturbances of my sleep, no single, no single day. Chen Chen was saying that fortunately he did not have a single sleepless night. But in terms of the future of so, the world, uh, what is he afraid of? Is he afraid of? Uh, us not being aware of our environment? Is he afraid of war? Is he, what does he worry about today, given the situation in the world? Is it poverty? Oh, I think uh, environment issue. The environment. Uh, and then, of course, the, the gap, rich and poor. Poverty. And, and those are the, uh, uh, not only global level, but also the uh, national level this huge gap, and then these, those, those poor people, really helpless. And then sometimes 
They say there are sort of difficulties bring more frustration. Frustration creates sometimes anger. So then violence. So that's really sad. There has been a lot in, in, of research done that says that one of the best ways to alleviate that gap and to deal with the poverty around the world is to empower young girls, um, to invest in young girls, empower them, educate them, mm -hmm. do micro-lending for women. Do you believe in that and will you make that part of uh, your dialogue even into the new year and beyond? To me, that. The emphasis on young girls. Yes, no doubt, yes. Oh, yeah. I haven't the uh, details of knowledge about that, but maybe. Uh, a female and so the, the cause of that, uh, take special care upon their youngsters. So maybe, I don't know. Maybe that's a good thing to yes, talk that's, about. There's no doubt. That's good. Yes. That's right. You like it? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> You, but, but, uh, you but, said when you were here, I guess the other day, you declared yourself a feminist. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean because, to you? Huh? What does it mean to you to be a feminist? Huh? <laughs> Not much differences. Uh, whether you call a feminist, whether you call Kazoda. Uh, the other days I mentioned whether you call uh, me God King or Living Buddha or Demon, doesn't matter. So let's go with the God King, the Buddha, and the feminist. <laughs> I think. So I, I mentioned, you see. I'm a supporter uh, of women's rights. Those. Because, you see, I emphasize a special rule of the female. Now, that now very much relevant to today's world. So therefore, some people may describe me as a feminist. That I just mentioned like that. I don't know. I think that's good that you declared yourself a feminist because it means that you believe that the qualities that are inherent in women can perhaps have a positive influence on the world and that women should have all the same rights throughout the world. Do you think there'll ever be a female Dalai Lama? Oh, yes. Yes. That, that I always mentioned. I know. They actually, as early as 69, I officially stated that whether Dalai Lama institution should continue or not up to Tibetan people. So that means that majority of Tibetan people feel the Dalai Lama institution is no longer relevant, and then this institution I think 600, 600 years, right? Six centuries sort of tradition and there's no problem. <laughs> because some people uh, have the impression that Dalai Lama institution is so important about Tibetan Buddhism. That's wrong. Uh, so then in, ca then in case uh, concerned people feel this institution should continue, should preserve, then the next question is, uh, the, uh, how to succeed? How to, what, what successor? Uh, oh, select the successor. There are also is a different method, possibility. There are different methods. One I think quite reliable, quite safe sort of method is like the uh, the succession according the bazaar. Pope among the cardinal. Uh, the system of select choosing the pope. Mm, that's also very, very sound, very good. And then uh, among Tibetan also, isn't that kind of a practice? It's already there. 
uh, last several centuries, that kind of way is there. Then should uh, people uh, should prefer, should choose the traditional way, then the uh, selection, uh, selection or the choosing reincarnation. So in that case, uh, in case the female dilemma uh, can be more sort of effective, more useful than female dilemma, why not? And then also, you know, in Tibetan, Tibetan tradition, there are uh, some higher reincarnated lama institution, actually female. I know one, uh, I think almost, I think 700 year old institution of high reincarnated lama, always female. So like that. Do you think if there were to be a, a female Dalai Lama, she would be accepted? Yeah. By the other monks? No, under certain circumstances, you see, the people, I think, the people, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you see, if the circumstances are such, the female dharma is more useful, then it will come. No problem. No problem. <laughs> Some individual may resent. That's always happen. Your, Your Holiness, um, my, I say to my children all the time, um, you know, you have to practice compassion, forgiveness, you can be successful, and also be known for being compassionate. And they always say to me, give me an example of one famous person who's compassionate other than the Dalai Lama. Mr. Sir, sir. Sir, You know, the late Mother Teresa. <laughs> Women. <laughs> Mother Teresa. Hmm. Wonderful, wonderful lady. Yeah. Wonderful lady. <laughs> so we have two, you and Mother Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think. Uh, because, you see, people or media did not much pay attention. Otherwise, in these uh, slums, India or Africa, in many places, I think there must be some people who are really sacrificing their own privilege or their own uh, well-being in order to serve those hapless people. I think there are thousands, thousands. I don't question. I agree with you, and I'm sure everybody here has met people uh, that they think are out there changing the world through compassion and through love and through peace. How do we get the media to pay attention to those people and to that story? I'm not going to leave it there. Hmm. Well, I think, personally, uh, so therefore, I always is telling media people uh, they should pay more attention, or money, they should pay equally uh, attention about the positive things. Uh, not only just the media. You think the media should be encouraged to pay more attention or equal attention yes. to people's positive more traits, balance, more, more balanced reporting? Otherwise, you see, uh, in the last several years, in, quite often, you see, some people ask me, uh, there are anxiety about the future of humanity. So that means they have the impression 
or we human being is so bad, so the world now becoming more doomed. So that impression happened because the media usually, with all the pictures or televisions or news, all these negative things, killing, murder, or like that. Uh, so then people get the impression of humanity basically negative. And do you feel it's the opposite? Are you optimistic about the world today? Oh, yes. Uh, basically, I believe, not only just believe, I think that the reasons basic human nature is more gentle, is more compassionate, because our life starts with compassion. Clear. Uh, so, uh, in our blood, uh, there is some kind of what's it, the ability to appreciate compassion, uh, affection. So, reason or the indication is person, mental state, more compassionate, more compassion, more warm heartedness. The stress reduce, blood pressure reduce, sleep better. So, that means... Easy, uh, easier said than done. So, 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 so that means this body go very well with this peaceful mind, compassionate mind. Anger, hatred, according to some scientists, even, you see, eating our immune system. So, therefore, these negative emotion, destructive emotion, also part of our mind. Biologically speaking, and up to a certain extent, these are necessary. Attachment brings, you know, brings sort of the uh, positive factor which is useful for our survival. So, attachment is in bring these things. Uh, anger expel the uh, some destructive, uh, I mean, any element which danger for our survival. So that's biological factor. In order to carry action, bring together or expel, we need motivation. In motivation level, now two things, attachment and anger. Uh, however, our life begins not by anger, but by attachment, love, loving kindness. So, that's more, I think, 24 hours, that's necessary. Anger, hatred, short period. Under particular circumstances, it develops, but, but generally, the compassion. Except compassion for the sound man. So, so Your Holiness, um, you've been so, here. So, therefore, therefore, compassion really works from the beginning up to death. At the time of death, a person knows now no longer the uh, usefulness of your friend, but still at that moment, the person surrounded by a friend who really loves you, who really shows you affection, then the dying person feels happy. So, so therefore, mm. so basically, we human being, human nature, I believe, gentleness or compassionate. Then, I think the the the, the, the point is. Our intelligence must be disposal of human affection. Then our life will become very good. But the, the mistake is when we grown up, we neglect upon this basic value and more attention about the sophistication of the brain. That 
brain like uh, any sort of knowledge. Knowledge can be destructive or constructive. Knowledge itself, something neutral. So other factor. The knowledge guided by hatred, then destructive. Knowledge guided by loving kindness, then positive, like that. Your Holiness, you've been here for three days talking to leaders from all over the world about compassion, a charter on... Not compassion. all over the world. Not all over the... They're not, they're not here from all over the world? Because Well, from parts of the world, three quarters of the world. <laughs> California, I don't know. But what, what have you learned? What has surprised you? What did you learn in Vancouver? Oh, yesterday I learned, uh, uh, I mean, yesterday in our meeting, I, I learned, or oh, I was very much impressed, one Bangladesh uh, gentleman, uh, he uh, started on, on a small level, NGO. Oh, on NGO, An NGO. then is it gradually, because uh, of the national level, then not only that, he uh, exported his sort of expertise or his sort of experience to other countries. Oh, that's really wonderful, really wonderful. So one uh, single person initiated, then eventually can be effect to, I think, uh, millions of people. So that's wonderful. That I learned. Otherwise, I don't know. Of course, <laughs> of course, you see, the a short moment is very impressive. Is when people just talk. The, actually, so I always, you see, they have this sort of attitude when meeting with people. Then some kind of what's the education, learning, learning, learning. So each person. Or oh, then yesterday, uh, another person is it uh, mentioned the last century over 200 million people killed. Then this morning here, uh, the existing modern education is not adequate. These are, uh, oh, something, something very good. Uh, very educational, yes. When we, we spoke um, in India, I went to visit His Holiness on Damsala, and I was struck by the school uh, for Tibetan children that instead of putting children in a timeout, um, they have peace corners in the school. And uh, the teacher, I saw a child misbehaving and she said, you're going to the peace corner. I said, what's the peace corner? And she said, that's where we send children to reflect on their behavior, but we try to get them to reflect in a peaceful way. I uh, see. Yeah. <laughs> That's your philosophy. Well, that's what they told me anyway, but I thought that you talk a lot <laughs> all over the world, um, that, that uh, how important it is to encourage children Again, in school. Again, not all over the world. Not all over the world. Uh. <laughs> I was just playing with you. Uh, but to encourage children's emotional well-being in school, that that in fact makes them feel calmer, happier, more empowered. You're a big believer in that. Yeah, yes. Uh, whenever I meet some young people, I always give them hope and self-confidence and importance of these people. That's important. I read a very interesting statistic the other day, Your Holiness, that last year in the United States there were 4,000 books published on happiness. 4,000 books. <laughs> oh. And that women in particular were less happy than they had been in the 70s. So we're buying more books on happiness, trying to get happier, and we're getting unhappier. <laughs> Why do you think that is?
We need research. I don't know. You always told me it's very simple. Just concentrate on within, make yourself okay with yourself, and everything else will fall into place. Yes, You told me that. That's right. Please. Uh, firstly, and start with yourself. Then that creates certain sort of atmosphere. <coughs> then other people also, oh, I think, get some some sort of some feeling, some vibration, including animals. So I often used to ask audience, or including some professors, I think they, last year, I think in Oxford, I met uh, some talk with some people, and some uh, professors on that great famous university, some, some professors. <laughs> so I asked them <laughs> one question, that uh, in species of mammals, including these insects, on what level their brain have the start ability to, uh, to appreciate other something because of that, or affection. So because uh, it seems to me mosquito don't have that kind of ability. <laughs> <laughs> Dogs and uh, cats or, and many birds also you see, have the ability. So looks mosquito and such sort of small insects seems to see no ability. So I'm wondering what level, what size of brain have the ability? So no answer. <laughs> so that also one field to investigation. <laughs> Always much investigation. Finally, Your Holiness, um, some people here were talking to me about the need to rebrand. Really? <laughs> the word compassion. <laughs> Do you think we need to explain to people in a different way what compassion is so that they can put it into effect in their lives today? I think as far as the Tibetan word is concerned, not necessary to that, to that. But, uh, but English, I think that's those, because of those are the uh, uh, English expert. I don't know. It's one of those things you know it when you see it? Just for a minute, you are the compassion of the nature, those pity, pity, as usually, you see, the, uh, when I give the uh, explanation or when I give talk about compassion, and sometimes I just make the, the definition of compassion. So it necessitates some kind of uh, explanation. So if we find one word, Without this explanation, this is something because of the correct meaning. Yeah, that's good. It's simpler. But I don't know. <laughs> you do too now. Hmm? So I want to thank you, Your Holiness, because I know that uh, there are going to be several women that are going to come out here and you're going to talk about the role of women hmm. in peace, in promoting peace from a compassionate place, and what role women can have on bringing our world to a more peaceful place. Do you know something about that? Yes? Mm. you have something to say about that? Yeah. Mm. Then let us discuss yes. later. Yes. Huh? Thank you so much for, for talking. <laughs>